by unanimous decision. And now, the WBC, the WBO, the IBF, and Ring Magazine, Super Welterweight Champion of the World, No! the incredible Natasha Jonas. She's the world champion, WBO, WBC, IBF, fighter of the year. I'm truly honored to have you in the ring with Roxana to share your story. Nice one, thank you for having me. So, the first question I wanna ask, I wanna dive straight in. What does it take to become a world champion? Um, belief in yourself is the biggest thing, the biggest asset you can have. I think um, hard work, mm. um, never giving up, mm. um, and just keep on going. Absolutely. I mean, I look at you as a role model, and every time I have doubts, fears, I'm not good enough, or I'm too old. There's so much politics in boxing. I think of you, and I think you've really paved the way for boxing in general, not just for women's boxing, boxing in general, because you've overcome so many obstacles. And now look at you, fighter of the year, three world champions, champion in a year. What kind of sacrifice have you had to make in order to get there? lots and this is not just you know 2022 has been an amazing year but it's 17 years in the making it's 17 years of ups and downs it's 17 years of sacrifices it's 17 years of missing out on mm. huge monumental family occasions um so yeah it's not it's not just about this year even though this is on record probably my best year in, yeah. in in boxing it's a it's a long time in the making mm. um yeah you sacrifice you know Friendships, relationships, um, time with your family, time with your loved ones. Like I said, I missed out. I was the chief bridesmaid for me, um, my cousin who is like almost like my sister. I missed out on her wedding, even though I was the chief bridesmaid. Yeah. Um, you know, you spending can't do time the thing. Yeah, well. spending time with my little girls, the the, the main one to be honest. Mm. Um, and I, I know that, like, I I thought at first it was just me. And uh, it was just boxing that was making that time. But, you know, a lot of my friends are, are also mums. Yeah. And, and they was going through the same struggles when, when they had new, uh, new uh, young children, mm. was that they thought they didn't have enough time. And, and that helped me realise that okay. it, wasn't just, it wasn't just me that feels that way. Mm. It, it's every working mum. How do you manage to balance the both? I think you just find your way, like everybody else. Like, no one gives you a book on how to be a mum or, you know, everyone gives you advice that you're trying, you know, you've got the hospital giving you one, your nan giving you another, your mum giving you another, mm. and you try and, like, do it all, but yeah. eventually, as, you know, you'll find a way that works for you. And the one thing I will say about being a mum, you know, is is that when I was, you know, just uh, coming through the amateurs and on, on, on that GB mm. squad, everything was about the results, and it still is now when I'm in the boxing gym, but I was so results focused on the results that even when I was went home I was still thinking about the results and I still I was stuck in the athlete mindset all the time and um, now as a mum as soon as I shut the door to the gym and open the door to the house mm -hmm. she doesn't care whether I had a bad spa or <laughs> she doesn't care about you know who I've got next all she wants me to be is mum so mentally yeah. I do have that switch off which I, I felt I didn't have before mm. and, and sometimes you know if you're constantly stuck in that athlete mindset yeah. like it gets on top of you and you do feel drained mentally more than physically mm -hmm. and you hear so many boxers say that boxing's you know it's 90% mental and only 10% yeah. physical yeah. and that's yeah. one of the reasons why because you're never switch able off. to just get that switch off. Mm. I think it's, that's a really crucial point that you touched on about mental health and being able to compartmentize and not just fully absorb 
and live in boxing because that's not healthy either. It's being able to still train when you're training, when you're spending time with your family, you're fully present. And that's what's gonna give you the edge because you're more relaxed and you have a healthy lifestyle. Um, I want to dive in straight into your amateur career now. So let's begin with your story. You started off playing football as a teenage girl. How did boxing come about? Um, I, I played football at quite a high level. I was playing for Liverpool, got like England trials and stuff. Wow. Um, I got a scholarship to go to play football in America, mm-hmm. which is, you know, USA is still the number one team in the world now. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was a lady called Mia Hamm when I was growing up who was the first kind of superstar in female football uh, that I remember. Um, she was the first woman to get a million pound sponsorship deal with Nike. And it had been unheard of, you know, America was the number one team. So I just wanted to get there. And when I got that scholarship, I thought, right, this is my opportunity. <laughs> had me whole, you know, sight set on, on being this, you know, this this f- professional footballer. Because mm-hmm. America's where everything happened at the mm-hmm. time. Um, and I was supposed to be there for four years, was there for two. And I got injured. Wow. And they just said that, you know, we're talking, I don't like to say it, but like nearly 18 years ago now, um, and the injury that I had, it was just the end of my football career. It'd take mm-hmm. a, a year to heal from, okay. then, you know, six months to get back into training, and then, you know, maybe you'd play like you was before, but mm-hmm. it's almost te- like 18, tw- t- two years out. So, um, yeah, it was the end of my football career. And mm-hmm. then because I didn't go to, I didn't go to the university for the academic side of a honest, I was never really great that academically anyway. I was, mm-hmm. Was, wasn't really interested <laughs> um, so I decided to come home and you know you, you come home you, you, I was one of the first people in my family to go to university everyone was dead proud and mm. I, I felt like I let them all down when I came back you know I lost a lot of big friendship group because you're not mm. involved in football anymore yeah. um, and yeah Gee. mentally mental health wise I was I was affected and probably looking back I do think I was a little bit depressed um, mm. And I put on a lot of weight because I didn't do the first time in my life. I never did sport for a whole year because of my injury. I'm just because of, I thought, right, I'm never going to be, you know, at that level at anything yeah, else. Yeah. And I just started going to my uncle's karate gym. Yeah. And it was just a bag, free weights, I run a mm-hmm. machine. I used to do my own thing and get off. And some woman was there and she like kind of watched the gym for him because it was in a bit mm-hmm. of a rough area in Liverpool. And she was like, stop training by yourself. Come and join us at our yeah. your local gym, which was the Rotunda, ABC. Mm. And she, she asked, kept on asking me for months and I just said, yeah, I'll go next week. And never <laughs> never went. And I just thought to myself, boxing, like, I don't want to be punched in the face. I just don't want to go <laughs> So eventually she bugged me that much that I thought, I can't just keep like, fobbing her off. I'm just going to have to go. Mm. And then when she asked me the next time, I said, I didn't like her, not going back. Mm. And that was 17 years ago. And I went and yeah. never looked back. Wow. How did it feel to be selected for Team GB? Incred- I mean, you was the first female GB boxer, Olympian. So how did that feel, that moment where you just, well, actually, football didn't work out, but I've got another opportunity, another lifeline. Yeah, I think all my life, all I've done is taken me opportunities when they come. Mm. Um, and it's, it hasn't led me to a bad place. So, mm. you know, I haven't done the wrong thing. But I think, you know, we had to go on assessments for GB. I yes. think there was 47 people, you know, from Northern Ireland, England, Scotland, Wales, that went to these assessments. Mm. But there was only going to be nine, nine funded places because yeah. we'd never had to make a team GB before, yeah. before, team GB before for women. Yeah. Um, we had to go through, I think, about four months of assessments that got on to be selected. Then I was competing against Amanda Coulson, mm-hmm. who was always a big, big yeah. rival, Chantal Cameron, yeah. uh, Ruth Raper, all to be that one person selected to go to that one qualifier that we had, because we only had one shot to qualify in 2012. And there was, that, there was points that my performances were so bad that I almost got kicked off the squad. Um, but like, it, just, it was just the turning point was winning the London Test event in the December of 2011. And from then on, I went to um, Brazil yeah. and beat the world number two in, mm-hmm. in Brazil. Um, so that kind of put me the front runner. Yeah. And I just had to. St- I knew I just had to stay there. Mm-hmm. So you know, from the from the January um, to the I think the May 
yeah. June was the qualifiers. Amazing. I just stayed the front runner. <laughs> and yeah, I got to go to the Amazing. qualifier. And, you know, the, the qualifiers itself was a, a whole nother story. We got there. We got told about how we was, you know, you had to become, come in the top 10. And I, I knew I was top 10 in the world. And then they mm. changed how you qualified and mm -hmm. said, actually, it's going to be in regions. So you have to mm. come top top three in the region. And, and, and Europe was a really mm. tough division. You know, we had Sophia Rochegave, Katie Taylor, mm -hmm. Gulsum Tartar, uh, Ingrid Egner. We had just loads of top, top fighters. And yeah. I, got, I was thinking oh, in, in the qualifying fight, I was two down after round one. Mm -hmm. I was one down after round two. I was level at, at round three. And then I had the probably the best round of boxing I've ever had. And ended up winning and qualified. That made me first mm -hmm. person to qualify to the team. And... I, I actually told my mum when I was four, watching the 88 games in Seoul, that I was going to be there. I, like, I wanted to be there. I didn't really know what the Olympics was. I'd just seen all these sports happening on the telly, mm -hmm. and I loved sports. Yeah. And obviously my mum was like, yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> go, go and practice. <laughs> and you manifested um, and that. And 24 years later, it yeah. happened for me. So to share that moment with my mum mm -hmm. was so, so special because then obviously she told me the story. and. You know, I've been through a lot with football and yeah. with all other, you know, mm. I've tried probably 101 different sports that she's took me through throughout my childhood mm. um, and I finally got there, so. And the boxing was the one. The one, one yeah. yeah. The, the only one I didn't, didn't want to do. What is it about boxing, though? God, I ask myself that all the time. I think I, I actually question myself all the time like what am i doing here like oh, I, I was having <laughs> the same conversation this morning yeah like I, I, like you, you warming up and thinking why, why am i why am i here again how did i get here again and then you know as i'm like they say shout your name and it, your heart starts to flutter and then my music plays and i think that's why yeah and i walk to the ring and see the crowd i think that's why yeah. and get in the ring i think this is why and it's that that addiction to that really? that high that I just can't, I'm not ready to let go of yet. Yeah, yeah. But I always do question myself before. Mm. I mean, when I walk into the ring, I'm thinking, oh my God, why am I doing this? <laughs> but then at the same time, it's a, um, it's, it's a sense of accomplishment. When I come out on the other side, I'm so proud of myself because I didn't allow fear to step in my way. And... It's, it's, it's an incredible feeling to overcome, um, to master your own emotions and to work through that. What, what do you think, because I know you obviously competed as an amateur for the Team GB and that was amazing. And then you had an injury again that prevented you from competing at the Olympics. And I realised you then thought about coming into professional boxing and you talk about your friend calling you up and, you know, one of your former Team GB, yeah. uh, was it Ben? It was Tom Stalker, Tom, our team it. captain, yeah, for 2012. And you're, you're literally ringside watching Katie Taylor boxing and you're commentating on her fight. What was that like and was that the turning point to transition into professional boxing? Even though I'd, I'd retired from amateur boxing, but the, the hardest decision I've ever made was retiring from amateur boxing because mm. there wasn't a women's pro scene at that time. Okay. There was, but it was it's very unheard yeah, of. yeah. You, mm. you you didn't you weren't on telly. You mm. probably were still going to have to work anyway, and 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 there was just other barriers that was in the way. Yeah, you wasn't supported. You know, you mm. wasn't really. You know, there wasn't anything. There wasn't a pathway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. When I, when I decided to leave amateur boxing, I was effectively saying goodbye to boxing. That's how I felt. Um, I was doing little, you know, coaching sessions with the kids in the rotunda for, mm -hmm. right, I'll go back and, mm -hmm. you know, become a, a coach and was there two, three yeah. times a week. Um, and that was, that was okay for me. I was doing my own little, you know, circuits <laughs> and joining in, you know, the yeah. key fit classes yeah, yeah. two times, two or three times a week. Mm -hmm. So I thought, like, that, I'm happy with that. That's... You know, I'm still involved. I'm still mm -hmm. doing something within like boxing. Doing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and then Sky asked me to go and do some commentary. Obviously, me and Katie had history. Mm -hmm. um, 
on on Katie's debut. Yes. So I, I was sitting there and I was watching it, you know, giving her all the, you know, she's a brilliant boxer and she actually blew, blew the girl <laughs> away. So it was like, that's what we expect of Katie, you know. Mm. She's such a talent, you know, paved the way for a lot of girls. Mm. And and then I left and then Tom just phoned me. I was like, oh, I've just seen you, you know, doing your sky you were brilliant. And, you know, I thought you spoke really well. It's like, I think, I think Katie will open a lot of doors. Wouldn't you think about coming back? Now, by this time, I'm like, two stone overweight <laughs> or, or I'm two stone over the weight that I was and I'm like shut up Tom shut up I'm out of that athlete mindset I'm a mum now mm. and I'm like no shut up Tom like I'm yeah. got self-employed doing bits of work yeah. here and there mm. I said sure shut up and then he was like no 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 I, honestly I think I think you should look into it so I put the phone down and I, like it didn't bother me I, but then I don't know something just it was like well, what is stopping you? Yeah. Like the baby, when you're a new mum, mm. like like I said before, it's it's hard to take on everyone's bit of information, and you're trying to create this perfect human and this perfect environment to mm. try and you know, and it's so hard, it's so stressful because you just you just you, it's you're, you're responsible for a whole other person, and you mm. don't really, no matter how prepared you are, you're never prepared. Yeah. Um. And, and yeah, I would, she, so she was, all, I was so focused when I left boxing mm. on her and how making her perfect mm. that like, I forgot about me. So. Like, I swear, like, <laughs> it, for the first six months of her life, I must have brushed my hair about three times. So I had just did forgot about me all, all mm. together and was just so focused on her. But then you get into your own routine. Mm -hmm. And you get, you, you know, she settles at this time, you feed her at yeah, this time, yeah. she's there at this time, she goes to the nursery at this time. Mm -hmm. So she's in a routine now. Yeah. And I was like, well, what is stopping me? Because the baby's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm self-employed so I can work around it, work myself. Um, so f I phoned the two po closest people that I'm closest to is me, my cousin who's um, wedding that I missed, <laughs> <laughs> and my mum. So I phoned, I phoned them both and I was like, Mum, Tom's just said this on there. What do you think? Mm. She was like, well, you'd have to be 100% in. You can't just yeah. be like toe dipping. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I would be. And she was like, well, what you, what's stopping you? I was like, well, you know, a bit worried about babies. She was like, the baby's not an issue. Like, we all, you know what we're like. I was like, yeah, that's like, you've got to be 100% in. That's all. That's the only thing I'm worried about. Mm -hmm. So if you can go 100% in and you believe in yourself, like we believe in you, go. I was like, Sam, put the phone down to my mum, phone my cousin. She was like, what are you, like, she said the same thing to my mum, what are you worried about? I was like, mm -hmm. not really, something like the baby. She was like, shut up, the baby behind. <laughs> yeah, we'll look after the baby, you know, blah, 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 blah. and, you know, you, you've got to, you've got to be all in. I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And she was like, yeah, but we're behind you. And that was enough. So I was like, phone Tom. I was like, Tom, what do you need? <laughs> <laughs> what do you need? He was like, you need a manager and you need a, a trainer. Wow. So, then, so yeah. he gave you that advice and that. Yeah, yeah. And Tom ended up being my trainer for, really? for a short while, yeah, wow. yeah. Sorry, he was, he, he was ended up being my manager mm. for, for a short while. So. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. And how did Matchroom come about? Because I was actually there at your debut at your call and I was like, Miss GB, yes. <laughs> and it was an incredible night of boxing. You absolutely demolished her. How did that experience what was that experience like for you now going into the professional scene, um, Matchroom signed you, talk us through that. Yeah, I think it, the, the, it came about through Joe, to be honest. we spoken to a few. I think we was in talks with Hay at one stage. Mm. We, was, we had a talk with Frank Warren, but he just signed Nikki, so it was like, yes, I'm not really that's right. interested in any more females at the moment. Mm. Um, and then there was obviously Eddie and like we, we kind of said, oh, we could build up that rivalry between Katie and I and, <laughs> and, and, and Eddie, Eddie took it. So, um, but yeah, I think, you know, to get back into it, I thought at, at first I was worried about not having a head guard because I'd never, mm -hmm. never boxed without a head guard before. But when after my first fight, I was like, actually, I enjoy being yeah. able to see everything oh and not God. like being so restricted, restricted with, yes. with what you can see. You know, yes. you've got a bar. You can't see an uppercut. Yes. You've got the big ones and you can't see. It's like you can't see anything pink. So I actually enjoyed yeah. being, and then I enjoyed hitting people with, with, <laughs> with a 10 ounce glove, but not me. It's a lot lighter, isn't it? Yeah. And also, you don't have the weight of the head guard because you can move your head a lot faster. So, signed to Matchroom Boxing, and 
the opportunity comes along to fight Katie Taylor. Talk us through that. What was one of the hardest fights you've been in? Because um, you've had quite a few. Oh, tell me about difficult, it. <laughs> and everyone's different. Everyone brings different strengths to the table. What was it like for you? And, t- you know, tell us about that. Yeah, to say my match room was brilliant. You know, it was a big... Um, it was a big team on a big platform, you know, mm. with a big promoting, a big promoter supporting you. So it was a, a good start to my career. Um, yeah, but uh, people would say, what was your hardest fight? And every, mm. every fight's hard for different reasons. Yeah. I think Terry Harper, I felt really disrespected about, you know, like everyone just, because I'd been beaten by over off, everyone was like, yeah, yeah you're, she, you're too old, she's too sharp, she's too fish, she's too fat, <laughs> she's too fit, she's too this, she's that. I was like, you're really like, that's one, that one loss. Mm. And you was really saying that. I felt really disrespected. So yeah. I put a lot of pressure on myself mm. um, to go out and prove everybody wrong. Um, then, you know, that happens and people are like, okay, we'll, we'll give you a profit for that. But, mm. you know, then the next fight was Katie. Uh, Katie's a different kettle of fish to Terry and yeah. obviously the aura that she brings and everything that she brings um, you know I was getting blasted out in round mm. four and round six and whatever and then you know mm. I have another good performance I, I, I do feel like I need challenges to step up to I, I've, mm. I like to be the underdog um, and you know I got respect after that fight as well but then there's you know the Namas fight not long after and I think when you're talking about pressure wise and hard it, it was it was a fight at late notice. I, I I was planning to fight somebody else and within five weeks we had changed to Namas. Um it was my third title challenge at mm. the third different weight and it, it was like kind of billed as the last chance saloon yeah. and that's how I felt. If I lost that, there was literally nowhere to go. So the pressure was immense. Um obviously it goes and wins that. Mm. And then I would say, you know, beg out for the fact of, you know, you're in Liverpool, you're in your home city and you want to perform in front of everyone, you know, you haven't boxed there for about three years. Mm. So that was, that was, again, was pressure that I put on myself. And then the care was just, you know, physicality wise, you mm. know, when I was boxing, it was fine. Yeah. But as soon as I started tussling, you know what it's mm. like when, you know, if someone <laughs> says, prime example of this is Amir Khan, mm. people say, you haven't got a chin. Yes. And it's, best asset is his fast hands and good feet but he stands there and trades because he tries to prove to people that he's got a chin so you know when someone when the care was in there and she was like I'm 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 gonna show her that I'm too strong I'm too big I'm too powerful mm. and when I was boxing I was fine but then yeah. when she started yeah. tussling, trying to throw me around like just as if to say I'm stronger than you I was like I started t- tussling with that I was like yeah. you know <laughs> I'm trying to prove it to prove her wrong but you know, that kind of played into their hands for a few rounds and Joe was like, what are you doing? Yeah. Just get back, back to your box. Go back to your, your game plan. Go back yeah, to your yeah, box and yeah. forget yeah. trying to like tussle yes. with it. Just do what you've been ta- taught to do. It's interesting and, how you get caught up into their game, their rhythm, and then you need to reset yourself. Yeah, of course, Actually, yeah. It's not a battle of egos in here. It's a battle of skill. And yeah, your yeah. skill is being sharper. It's being able to box rather than getting into a tussle. Yeah, you've got to use your assets and Absolutely. I knew what my assets were coming in I knew what my assets were for the first four rounds and then <laughs> you just get you know a little bit you taken about right, yeah you get it. dragged into it but that's experience on her part and she knew that she was four rounds down and had to pull something back so you know that's the the physicality of the, the, the physical game of chess and yeah. boxing that we play so how do you deal with pressure because you've been in you know such high pressure situation and it's all or nothing, you're all in. How have you dealt with this pressure? I think just belief in myself. Um, and, and yeah, just just focus. Mm. Like I, I've been guilty of switching off <laughs> in my fights and you know, I start like talking to myself. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, you're just being hit, you know, yeah. oh, that, that, that was silly. <laughs> you get hit again. So yeah, just, just stay in focus. But I think one of the biggest things, I, I, Every time you, you go into the boxing ring, you mature a little bit. You've learned something from the fight before. Absolutely. Um, and I think uh, we, for the Harper and Katie Taylor, probably what cost me the fight was slow slow start. Mm. But Katie Taylor, it was the championship round. Mm. So the, the last you know two rounds. Um, 
So you, I learned that, and yes. I, you know, I learned how she n- nicked the rounds, and I thought, mm. like, that won't happen again. Terry I felt like I had it in trouble, and then mm. kind of let off the hook, and she, we, you know, it ends up being a draw. Mm. But you know, that that again, I thought, if I ever have someone like that, it won't happen mm. again. So you're trying to learn something, but you're also learning something like tactic wise, because now I think, like, outside of the ring. I was always so focused, like I say, I like being the underdog and mm. I let people say stuff and I'm not really bothered about social media now, but like I used to like things and think, I'm going to come back and reply to you. <laughs> you know, like I used to through everyone that was like, yeah, I was going to knock you out in six. I thought, I liked it. That's yeah. I'm going to come back and reply mm-hmm. to you when this is over because you're going to eat your words. And mm. now I was trying to prove all them people wrong. Yeah. Whereas and then your the Joes, my mum, you know, my parents and my family, my friends and my fans, I was trying to prove them right. And now I've just let that all go and yeah. I just do it for me. Yeah. I don't, I'm not yeah. trying to, like, you know, prove, prove anyone. anyone. Yeah. I'm just proving yeah. it to myself. And I think I'm in a better space for doing Absolutely. that. I feel in a better space. And I feel like I've probably, against the, the care, that it was the most relaxed I've ever been going into a mm. ring because I'm just like, I'm not bothered. I'm just going to let it flow and do what I do best. I guess this is what self-mastery is all about, is letting go and not putting external pressure on yourself and being proud of who you are and who you're becoming. Um, what has been your biggest obstacle? I think... There's, there's been obstacle, obstacles from the get-go of yeah. even just being a kid. Yeah. You know, I was born and raised in Toxteth. Um, my mum was a teenage mum. She had me when she was 15. You know, she was told to, you know, it's probably best if she gets an abortion, you know. And then, you know, going through school, I don't even grow up being like her. And, uh, you know, it, there was a lot of drugs and crime and, you know, there's everything around around us because we're living in the aftermaths of the toxic riots and a lot of unrest in the, in the city and I think you know people everyone around and, and, and outside of Liverpool puts barriers up on yeah. who you can be what you can become just because you, you look a certain way because you're a female I remember the first time playing footy around the corner with me two little lad cousins <laughs> Because my two older boy cousins were like me heroes and whatever, whatever they did, mm-hmm. I did. Wherever they went, I went and whatever, like, they had to take me. So <laughs> being with lads, you kind of do what lads do and yeah. you, you know, yeah. you climb cheese, play football, you ride your bike. Mm-hmm. And that's where the love of football came. And I remember like, even as a little kid, I knew I was better at a footy than one, one cousin, <laughs> definitely. Not the older one, but the, the second oldest one, I was like, well better than him. But lads like, choose the good players and mm. then we'll choose the mates. Yeah. And because I'm the little girl standing there, they're like, yeah, you're last. last. And I was like, I'm going to, by the end of this year, mm. playing with Jews, I'm going to make sure I'm picked before half of these lads. And I was. You know what? I feel as though you've, this is where your inner resilience comes from because you've had, the thing is, I think that was the wrong question for me to ask what's been your biggest obstacle because I think, like you said, we face obstacles on a daily basis and it's the accumulation of obstacles eventually most people tire out but it's having the courage and the confidence and self-belief to continue despite the obstacles and that's your like that you know it pinnacle. Your superpower. yeah it becomes your superpower that's it, it people like you're gonna have obstacles and no matter what no matter who you are no matter mm. what it is you want to do there's always going to be something trying yeah. to stop you yeah and it's it's how you get past that yeah. and I'm not there's so many boxes I've come along uh, along in my in my path and on my mm-hmm. journey that was so much better boxes than I were yeah, yeah. but you just they weren't have willing the to they weren't willing to stick at it like yeah, I was yeah. they weren't willing to go through what I was to yeah. get to get to what I, yeah. what they wanted the sacrifices yeah 100% heartache. and that's the difference like yeah. you know you see so many talented people mm-hmm. that don't get to where they should have 100% and, and that's the reason why is staying the course, isn't it? It's mm. having that determination to continue. It's wanting it that bad that you're willing to pay the price, which is not spending time with your fa- family. Yes, and, you know, the obstacles, the injuries, the, you know, there's so many. Um, and I, I will say as well, mm. I, I, I went, I've done a, like a bit more of a spiritual 
we had a bit more of a spiritual conversation with mm. with with somebody else, and she was talking about mani- manifesting stuff and yeah. seeing stuff and and all my life, like when I was a young kid, I watched John Barnes and I was like, I want to be like John Barnes. Then I watch Mia Hamm, I want to be like Mia Hamm. I want I, I watch Marion Jones, I want to be like Marion Jones. She did two sports. Yeah. Then I, I yeah. watch someone yeah. else, and, and all my life I have looked at up at being better and being mm. somebody bigger than 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 just like what everybody else like that yeah. little narrow mindedness of, yeah. of, of of what what you what where everyone else thinks you should be. Yes. I've always planned to be bigger, and I didn't realise that until I had that conversation that I've always knew I was going to be bigger than what I was. Mm. I've always planned on being somebody bigger. I love that. That's incredible that you had such an insight and such a vision and you fulfilled that through that spirit. I think what I've learned through boxing is that it's not just physical, it's not just mental. A lot of the time it's spiritual. You're getting in the ring and you're fighting for your spirit. It's having that heart to be able to push through even when you know it's getting hard you want to give up but it's the spirit that takes over fear will keep you in the same place yeah it's breaking through the fear that'll make you grow and help you grow absolutely do you feel that you've learned more from your failures than your success nobody likes to lose and i Mm. i I am definitely i'm not the lose type of person i don't even let me little girl when when we play (laughs) things um, but hindsight, I remember my first loss um, for England boxing. Mm-hmm. I'd never been beat before in England, and I went international and I got beat. And that loss taught me more than any of the eight fights before I'd won it at in, wow. for England. What did it teach you? That when, when things are going right, mm-hmm. even though things are going wrong, and you kind of know they're going wrong, because they're going right and you're getting the results you want, you won't change it. Yeah. Um, and that's exactly the same with open off. I was doing things wrong before open off mm-hmm. that I didn't correct because I was getting the result anyway. Yeah. And then that loss made me have to go all the way back down to base, strip myself down mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, mm-hmm. and build myself back up. Yeah. And now I'm stronger than I was before. But had it not been for that loss, mm-hmm. I'd still be doing the same wrong things. Absolutely. So like, yeah, it mm-hmm. it, it guts me to say it, but. Probably in hindsight, the loss was the best thing that ever happened. Mm, I agree. I think in life, you learn from your success, but you learn so much more about yourself and how you deal with situations from your losses. And it's having that mindset to kind of o- overcome and continue in your path. Um, moving on, I mean, I know you want to fight Katie Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Doesn't a fight that we can Doesn't see everyone? soon? I would love to say, yeah. Um, I kind of, we kind of knew leaving match room would close the doors on a, on a mm. few things, and um, that being one of them. But yeah, you know, now that you you, you know you're you bringing something to the table, it changes a lot of things Absolutely. as well. So I, I, I do think it's a great fight. I yeah. do think it's a fight that fans would love to see. Um, but yeah, I it, certainly it, would. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I'd love to get revenge. That's that's, 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 that's the be all and end all. Do you feel that women's boxing? is given the same respect um, financially, the opportunities that the men get in boxing? Is it equally treated? Definitely not. Mm -hmm. Um, We've come a long way since the days of Jane Couch. She'll tell you that. You know, selling £50,000 worth of tickets Mm -hmm. and getting paid 500 quid and, you know, at much to the detriment of her own. Mm -hmm finances and stuff yeah. so we have come a long way but there's still a long way to go the fact that big platforms big promoters and 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 we're visible is, mm. is huge for, for for us as a growing sport yeah. um and, and boxing's a bit weird because you know Anthony joshua mm. will always be paid more than sonny edwards yeah but you know as it comes to, we, we've broken down a lot of these barriers can we sell it yeah because katie sold out madison square garden mm-hmm. and savannah and clarissa sold out the o2 is it is it popular well a lot of fans tune in 2.2 or 2.8 million tuned into Savannah. Yeah. i can't remember what it was for clarissa but um, mm-hmm. uh, for katie but it was a big audience you know does it is it exciting well every single fight of the year category always has a women's fight in it so mm-hmm. yeah it is 
Mm-hmm. Um, so we're breaking down a lot of them, you know, barriers that were put up. And, mm-hmm. you know, as long as we keep doing that, we always knew as athletes how good women's boxing was. We just needed the world to see it. And now we've got the platform to do that and the stage to do that. And, you know, the best athletes to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, we've, we can only head in the right direction. Do you feel that that was one of the reasons you left Matchroom to box there? Because they weren't really giving women's boxing the same level of... Um, you know, fees as the men? No, I think um, the, the the fees were, were, were okay, but like, I just didn't feel valued there. Okay. So that's that's why I left. I was always going to be somebody's opponent on that yeah. on that platform. Okay. So I, I wanted to be, you know, I you wanted may. to be, yeah, I wanted to be <laughs> the home, the, yeah. I wanted to be the yeah. home fighter. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that was the main reason, um, mm. you know, and, and the finances were, were better. Obviously I got the, opportunity as well to to do the um commentary yes. as well as yes. as box so that's you know that's stuff beyond boxing that you can Absolutely. put a role that you can put yourself into and i'm i'm not going to box forever mm. i am towards the end of my career as opposed to the start so mm. you've got to start looking at, at viable ways to you know move on <laughs> finally what advice would you give to your younger self i wouldn't change a thing so it was just keep going, girl. Keep mm. going. It'll work out for you. In I the end. absolutely love that because it's you recognizing that it's a journey and not the destination. It's who you become on that journey. Yeah, every all them bad things make you, you know, who you become now. Teach you something. Teach you something new. So yeah, absolutely. Just keep going. Well, it's been remarkable talking to you. I have learned so much about resilience and mindset and how to deal with pressure. Um, I look forward to you getting back in the ring and hopefully that fight with Katie happens (laughs) and I'll be there ringside. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Tasha.